Welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Terry, and I'm your host, Terry Cato. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and I'm honored to have with me today author Soyini Taylor Walton, yes. the author of Going Through Hell to Get to Heaven. Mm -hmm. And I'm honored that she will be here and she, she's here and she's gonna share her story of survival and of a domestic violence incident. So sit back and I wanna first of all welcome you to the set. And Thank we're you. both wearing purple today in yes. honor of domestic violence um, survivors and That's victims. Right. Purple mm -hmm. is domestic, the mm -hmm. color of the, the domestic violence yes. um, platform. Mm -hmm. So welcome to the set. Thank you. And we're going to just go ahead and get started. Okay. And first of all, I want you to just tell us a little bit about sure. um, your relationship and you okay. and kind of how we even got to this point. Okay. Well, Terry, again, thank you so much for inviting me out. Um, I do. My, my wish is that my story does inspire people. Um, and I do want to get the word out about domestic violence and just to show you another face of domestic violence. So um, thank you again for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. So as Terry mentioned, uh, my name is Sweeney Taylor Walton. I grew up in Oakland, California. Um, I, you know, I was in a two-parent home, two brothers, very normal life. You know, um, high school, went to college, graduated from college, started working here in, in the Bay Area. Um, and then after that, after about two years after college, I got recruited from uh, Bank of America. Actually, I got recruited to Washington, D.C. to work at Xerox. And so I left the Bay, I went left for the East Coast. Awesome. <laughs> so um, I was out there and um, after, you know, after a while, I think every woman kind of, we get to the point where we're like, you know what, I want to settle down and, you know, get married and, and have children and all that stuff. Right around the time I was thinking that, uh, I met a guy mm -hmm. who I really thought was a great guy. Mm -hmm. You know, we met and we dated. Mm -hmm. I think the, the day after I met him, we went on our first date. So awesome. everything happened pretty fast. And how did you meet this guy? I met him at a concert, actually. Okay. Yeah, I was at a concert, mm -hmm. and we just kind of connected. And, um, you know, he seemed like a really nice guy, mm -hmm. so we connected. Then um, we went we went out the next day, and we were just like, oh, you know, he's, he was cool. I was cool. We were just having a good time, mm -hmm. having lots of fun together. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just seemed like any other relationship, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so after we started dating, you know, I, I do know that there were never any signs of domestic violence, which people ask me that question a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing I do know with him is that he did kind of tell me with different ex-girlfriends, there was, you know, they kind of didn't end, things didn't end well. Mm -hmm. So that was the only thing I kind of, if I look back, that's the only thing I can remember. Mm -hmm. We never even had an argument. Wow. Like in eight months of dating, it was just, it was really like, you know, smooth. Mm -hmm. So I just was like, okay, this, you know, that's like the only sign I can think. It was very normal, mm -hmm. and um, so after a while, there were a, you know a little few little things that I noticed that made me kind of say, you know what, I think we need to take a break from this relationship. And I told him that you know I wanted to end the relationship. Normally, when you end a relationship, that's kind of it. There's not you know a whole lot of drama, mm -hmm. especially after eight months. You know, um, so after we broke up, he just started to obsessively call me. Like, I'm talking, and I, I actually had a log of this. He called me like 100 times in one day, back and forth, home phone, cell phone, you know, texting, and he was not getting through to me, so he reached out to some of my friends that he knew, mm -hmm. and, you know, I was just like, this is very bizarre behavior, you know, and, and I just remember I was like, this isn't even like him, it's because he was always so laid back. I was like, where is this coming from? Mm -hmm. So it went from that to then all of a sudden he's coming to my house unannounced, which I thought this is, you know, really getting weird. Mm -hmm. Then my neighbor's like, you know, I saw him driving around. Like after you went to work, I saw him driving around the neighborhood looking at your house. And I was like, oh gosh, you know, what is this? Mm -hmm. What I didn't know at the time was that that was actually the beginning stages of stalking. Mm -hmm. And um, it was scary because I've never experienced that. In my home growing up, my parents, you know, there was no domestic violence in that relationship at all. Right. None in my own personal relationships, my friends either. So I was, this was very foreign to me that yes. somebody would start to stalk you. Right. Um, and in hindsight, I do wish that maybe I should have done like a Google search or something <laughs> on stalking. You know, it's just something as basic as that. But again, this wasn't in my whole frame of reference. Right. So um, at some point, one of my friends, I think, she was like, well, maybe you should look at getting a restraining order. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Like, right. whatever will make him stop, right. you know? And so I, I went to file a restraining order, mm -hmm. and 
that just actually made things worse. Wow. So yes. the restraining order mm-hmm. made things worse. They and did. It did. In my case, In it your did. case. Yeah. So uh, you actually share in your book mm-hmm. that day. That yeah. day. And if you <sighs> could just... If, if you could just share with us sure. um kind of the aftermath mm-hmm. of the day in court mm-hmm. and and how he even stalked you right there in yeah. court right there with police officers around right right in the public right you guys yeah. just, could you just talk about sure, that sure sure um so in the perfect world a restraining order should put the person that's you know perpetrating the violence sh- or the stalking it should put them on notice you know th- that they need to stop you know, and so naively, I thought this is going to happen. This is going to be the thing that's going to stop the phone calls, stop him showing up at my house, stop leaving me these crazy voicemails and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I got to court on that particular day. Um, this is in the state of Maryland, actually. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I went to court. I was by myself. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I got there, um, he saw, you know, I, I saw him. We locked eyes. And not in a good way. It was very terrifying because at that point, that had been maybe about two months of, of this behavior. So I was terrified. That was one time in my life where I just felt very powerless because I knew that um, he was looking at me in a way that let me know that he wasn't going to stop. And so when I got upstairs to the actual um, you know, courtroom, he began to harass me again. He was following me. He was physically you know, standing, you know, in a way that was very, you know, it was very uh, aggressive, aggressive, extremely aggressive, yes, Mm -hmm. extremely aggressive. And once we got into the actual courtroom, I sat down on a bench and he sat right next to me. He sat like literally right next to me. And this is in court. Yeah, and he was just like, you know, why are you doing this? You don't have to do this. And and I was just like, we are in court. And I was like, I don't know what I said, but I just was like, get away from me. And I, I think I found a place in the court where I could sit where he couldn't kind of get right next to me. Mm-hmm. And I just remember thinking, this is insane. 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 Insane that Absolutely. he was still harassing you yeah. right there in court. It was that level court. of aggression. It was that, that level of aggression. And wow. so when the actual proceeding was over, I went outside, you know, mm-hmm. and again, he was right there right behind me and um he was making all these pleas for us to be together and you know he said he got me these gifts and he had told my father that he was going to marry me all these ridiculous things Mm -hmm. and i just i think i just inside i was dying Mm -hmm. i was i was horrified because what do you do when somebody's that determined and a court doesn't scare him the police don't nothing scares right. him so even mm-hmm. once mm-hmm. you went to court you guys mm-hmm. went through the proceedings yes you exit the court and he's still Immediately. harassing he's you. still he's still, he's still harassing there. you yep. to the point where i remember you sharing mm-hmm. that somebody went inside a bailiff came out yes. and looked around like what's going on you know and i wanted to shout at that time you right. know i think i just you know, help me. Right. Just help me. But you were Somebody like, Somebody help me. Just in shock. I was terrified, yeah. And so you couldn't I was even terrified. verbalize what yeah. was going on. Yeah. So, wow, that's amazing. I'm just sitting there literally. If you've ever been in that much shock where you just you can't believe it, it's like, Is this a movie I'm watching mm-hmm. or is this my life? Mm-hmm. So, wow, that's was, amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And that happens all the time. All the time. And it's almost, mm-hmm. it's almost like, unreal yeah, that somebody would harass you in public mm-hmm. in a very public place like a court yeah. with bailiffs it and lets security you know. the level of aggression is it's right. it, it was that intense mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and and like it's, you said nothing mm-hmm. would indicated in the relationship no. that he was violent or no. aggressive I never saw that aggressive side like that I never saw the violent side and mm-hmm. I was just like who is this person it was as if it was as if something snapped Clicked, in him and right. he just he became obsessed with me and what and you mentioned i can think of you also mentioned something mm-hmm. about um you you didn't really know his family or you didn't get a chance to i meet didn't his, i didn't and i always mm-hmm. thought that was strange uh, mm-hmm. because um you know mm-hmm. that just, it was weird there was mm-hmm. a lot of information about his family i just didn't have mm-hmm. i didn't know so he was being kind of secret yeah he was and even mm-hmm. though he you know he was from um near the new york area mm-hmm. which isn't too far from maryland mm-hmm. but i never got to know too much about his family mm-hmm. life and so that was always kind of that was a little puzzling to me interesting yeah very because because yeah. um, pre- he was probably hiding something yeah yeah so in hindsight, he didn't want yeah. you to 
No. Yeah. So this has been good. So uh, yes. there is more to the story, yeah. and I'm so um, mm -hmm. I'm so honored and grateful that um, that you're here yes. to share that story. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're gonna um, take a quick break, okay. and then we're gonna come back, and we're gonna have more from author Soyini Taylor Walton. Welcome back to Real Talk mm -hmm. with Terry, and we're going to keep the conversation going with Soyini. And Soyini, yeah. um, you mm -hmm. have been through a very yeah. traumatic event. Yes. And I'm just grateful to God. I'm thankful to God that you're even here Thank today. You. It's a yeah. blessing. And I just Thank want you, you to um, walk us through mm -hmm. the day of the dreadful incident. Okay. Uh. Yeah, that that uh, was January fourteenth, two thousand nine, and um, at that point, the stalking had been happening several months, mm -hmm. and I just remember one thing you have to look at is patterns with people, mm -hmm. and for him, his pattern was to obsessively call me, show up in the neighborhood, you know, uh, call with threats and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Over the Christmas break, I'll never forget it. Kind of started to slow down, and then by January, mm -hmm. it just was kind of like nothing. And I just remember I was like, this isn't good. Mm -hmm. And I started sleeping at that point with a knife under my pillow because I was terrified. Mm -hmm. And um, I just remember that day in particular, I was trying to prepare. I was actually gonna be doing a presentation, like hosting a workshop, mm -hmm. and I couldn't get my thoughts together, which for me is not the norm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm always like able to, you know, put together presentations and things like that. Right. And I felt so nervous in my mm -hmm. spirit. I remember um, even my uh, my mom, two days before that, I remember my mom told me that my grandmother woke up one morning and she was just sobbing and crying, mm -hmm. and uh, a, lot. a lot. And it was funny because at that time I had actually done the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, maybe my grandmother was picking up on my spirit, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, then, so that particular day, I was really, really, really just uneasy. Mm -hmm. It was an experience that is hard to, put in words, but I definitely tried to in the book and I'll try to do that here. Mm -hmm. But it was just eerily quiet, mm -hmm. you know. It was eerily quiet and in my spirit I knew that something bad going was gonna on. happen. Mm -hmm. And I remember I just, you know, that night you know, that day I was like, well let me cook my favorite food. <laughs> Growing up in the Bay Area I like Mexican food a yes. lot. And so I, you know, I made some, you know, Mexican food mm -hmm. and I remember I just kept getting on the computer trying to do some work. And I was like, God, I just, I couldn't get myself together. And I was, mm -hmm. I was deeply sad inside. Like mm -hmm. I felt like something was coming. Um, and I went to church that night. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we had um, an event at church that I went to. And I remember praying for him at that, you know, at mm -hmm. church, mm -hmm. which I don't know. That was, but I, I prayed for him. Mm -hmm. And I just prayed that, his, you know, that for peace for him because mm -hmm. it was just too much. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that that would be a good thing to do. Just pray for him. Right. And I prayed for myself, obviously, as Absolutely. well. But um, when I got home, the ride from um, church, my church was in Baltimore at the time, so it was about a good like 30 minutes to where I lived. And um, I remember that drive home was like eerie. It was like, it was like everything was in slow motion, you know what I mean? Like my spirit, I think looking back, was just trying to tell me, just be very cautious and slow. So I just drove back and it was, it was the most still, quiet drive in my life. And the my home where I lived in my um, in my townhouse, mm -hmm. I had to make a right turn to enter the development, mm -hmm. and I just remember so clear, and I, and I just got goosebumps mm -hmm. thinking about this now. But um, I just remember the voice was like, "He's here," wow. and I remember it was so clear, and it just said it, and I was like, mm -hmm. I just remember I didn't want that to be true, yes. and I just kind of was like, "No, he, it's okay," and so I pulled in front of my house, and I I remember. Um, looking at my cell phone because I had a text message and I just remember something was like don't get out yet and I just kind of collected my myself you know and um, and then finally when I got myself together I got out of the car and right across from my my home mm -hmm. I heard my name mm -hmm. and I knew that voice I knew it very well mm -hmm. and um, it was him mm -hmm. so he started walking over towards me and I had a Bible in my hand mm -hmm. and in my other hand I had some papers from you know the thing at church and I just remember like hearing the papers trembling. Mm -hmm. I remember, I can still, I remember that because I was that scared. Mm -hmm. And I was so scared on, on, in my soul, I was scared. 
And I was just like, what are you doing here? I was like, I'm scared, you know, because I was thinking and talking at the same time. Mm-hmm. And he um, he kind of grabbed my arm and started pushing me up the stairs to get into the house. Mm-hmm. And the whole time, I'm like, what are you doing here? And mm-hmm. he's like, come on, let's just go talk. Let's just talk. And we got to the um, to the, my, my doorstep. Mm-hmm. And um, I just remember, like, looking at him. And I had the key in the door because I was actually going to let him, you know, come in the house. Yeah. And um, because he, the way he was grabbing me mm-hmm. was so forceful. And he was, like, grabbing but also pushing. Yes. And so I had the key in the door. Mm-hmm. And I remember that he's really tall, he was 6'5", and I remember looking up at him, and I was just like, what's in your in your jacket, you know? And he was just like, it's nothing, it's keys. And I know at that time, in my spirit, I was like, he's going to kill me. It's a gun in there. And I was like, he's going to kill me. Mm-hmm. And um, I took the key out, because I was like, I, I'm not going out like this, yes. you know? And um, I just turned around and... The spirit of God, I just turned into a lion. I was like, no. I said, whatever you're going to do, whatever you need to say, we need to. it has to be right here. Mm-hmm. And so um, I started walking down the stairs. Mm-hmm. And um, when I got to the bottom of the stairs, you know, I think I totally, like, threw his game off. Like, he mm-hmm. had a plan. He was going to get me in the house, yes. and God knows whatever he was going to do. Mm-hmm. And we were, like, kind of arguing back and forth. And he just pulled out a gun out of his jacket wow. And I remember I saw the gun, and um, I I remember seeing the gun. Mm. I remember. Oh <laughs> sorry, I'm no, sorry. No, 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 it's okay. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. You don't have to apologize. I do remember seeing the gun, mm-hmm. and I remember him. Um, I remember him mm-hmm. shooting me. Yeah. He shot me, and I remember I couldn't believe it, and I mm-hmm. I remember like I was hitting the ground. Mm-hmm. And I was like, God, this can't be the way I'm going to leave here. Right. I'm in shock. I'm like, a, you know, you just think about your whole life. Like, is this how I'm going to go? Absolutely. And I just remember he, him saying, it's not your time. Wow. And I just fell. Mm-hmm. And, and it's January. It's the East Coast. The the semen is freezing and it's hard. Mm-hmm. And I just fell. And um, then mm-hmm. he shot me again. Wow. And um At that point, like, my neighbor from across the street, she ran over. Mm -hmm. My neighbor next door, um, they came -hmm. came out, and these kids in the neighborhood and all these people, Mm -hmm. and I heard people praying over me, Mm -hmm. and, you know, it was just, it was, it was amazing. Amazing. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was awful. And I just remember, like, a a current of energy just flowing through my body, Mm -hmm. and I think it it was just the actual shock of of what Mm -hmm. happened. And I couldn't move. Mm -hmm. You couldn't move, but you could still hear what I was going on. I could hear. On my hearing was great. Um, at that point, I couldn't see. Mm-hmm. I had blood because yeah. the shoot the shot through in my face, yeah. and so I so had blood shot everywhere. You twice and, in the face. Mm-hmm. In the face, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and so um, he shot me twice in the face, and so there was blood everywhere in my hair, so I couldn't see anything, right. really, not too well. I, mm-hmm. I kind of saw him a little bit out of my left eye, mm-hmm. just like with the mm-hmm. first one, I saw him kind of like mm-hmm. the shock look in his face when yeah. he realized he, what he, he shot done. me. Yeah, so like he kind of snapped back into his self, like, oh my, like I did that, like, oh, oh my, my God. God. And then I remember the other one, and... Yeah. And then and, and, and after it happened, you hit the ground mm-hmm. and you hear people come out and they're praying for you. And at this point, you it's probably that you remember what people told you. At this he, point, at this point, I wanted to kick his ass. If so I could you, be very <laughs> yes. Honest, so that was your thought. I you, was <laughs> like, I was on the ground like this and I like, was trying to push up because so I was you were like, trying, you I were trying was to trying. push yourself I was up. like, I'm going to kick his you know yeah, bleep bleep because right. I'm 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 shocked but I'm I'm mad yeah. I'm like I'm gonna hurt you if right, I right. I couldn't get up but I couldn't do anything right. and um it's funny when I think about that now mm-hmm. of course you can't get up right. you know you but at that moment I was like I was that I was so mad I was like if I could just get off this ground and my right. neighbor he was like so you need just relax he was yeah. like sweetheart relax you yes. know and I just was like, oh my, you know. And so he, so he leaves. He leaves. He leaves. And yeah. and then what happens next? And then um, I think I just kind of blacked out for you a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, and the next thing I know, I felt some tugging on my pants. Mm-hmm. I thought it was him at mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. you know, maybe he's gonna do something else to right, me, right. something else mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it turns out, honestly, that was the um, the ambulance. Yes. So, so that the paramedics got there in Godspeed, thank thank the Lord. Mm-hmm. And they got me, you know, 
they got me in the in ambulance yes. and they started asking me questions. Yes. So my mind was very clear. I gave them all of my parents' information, mm-hmm. my address. I told them who did it, mm-hmm. the ca- awesome. car information on him. Mm-hmm. And then I think I just blacked out again and because I woke up and I was in the hospital. Hospital at that point. Mm-hmm. So then your parents get here. And mind you, get my them. parents were in Cal. They're in yes. Oakland. So your parents are in my Oakland. My parents are in Oakland, California. And this is all and happening they get this in call. the D.C. area. It's, yeah, because it happened at 10 o'clock at night. night. So the West Coast at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Yes. This is also the time when President Obama was being elected, and yes. I was going to be in. The, I was going to be at the inauguration at that point too, which uh, awesome. you know. So all these things are happening. So yeah. it's hard for them to get a flight out there of as course. quick as they want to, but they did. They got a flight, mm-hmm. um, and I, I just hate that they had to get that call. Absolutely, I really hate that they had to get that call and so to be so far away and get that call. Right, and and if you could, um, so <laughs> you your we know your parents get here. Praise be to God, you live. Thank you. Yes. That is a blessing because yes. not very many people right. have the same testimony, and you mm-hmm. look gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Nobody would know mm-hmm. that you were ever shot in the face twice mm-hmm. um, by the way you look because you look absolutely amazing. Yeah, so thank you. that's a blessing in and of itself. Mm-hmm. The fact that you're alive and you're not disfigured. So mm-hmm. that's just I'm just grateful to God for you and I know you are yeah and your parents and mm-hmm. brothers so um so let's let's mm-hmm. just let everybody know what happens with him yes. so you your ex. so he um I didn't find this out till about my second day maybe in the mm-hmm. hospital but he um when he shot me mm-hmm. he jumped on the highway my my house was right next to the highway so mm-hmm. he got on the highway he didn't even make it to the next exit and he pulled over and he uh he committed suicide wow so yeah. he never he, went to trial. No, not no, in prison. No. So he kind of yeah he determined his own. He fate. did his fate. Yeah. He determined his own. Yeah, fate. he did. So he did. Which is unfortunate. Yeah, it is. So, but it left me with a lot of questions like, why did you do yes. this? I'll never know why. Right. But, because there were there were exes before you. Yeah, there so were. So why you? Why he me? Snap. Yeah. Right. And it, yeah, I mean that's true. Like. Why did this have to happen? Not like I want this to happen. To have want this to happen to anyone else? Absolutely. But why did it happen to me? Right. So those are your thoughts. Like yeah. while you were in the hospital. While I was in the hospital, I was I'll terrified. Just... I was like, he's going to come back here and finish yes. the job because right. I didn't know he was gone. Didn't know yet. at that point. So I remember I was supposed to be sleeping and resting, but I would kind of have one eye open. Yeah. Like, wait a minute, you know, he might be coming in here, and I was like, these nurses aren't going to know who it is, mm-hmm. um, and I was just scared. Then you know, finally, my dad told me, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. so. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Wow, that is yeah. amazing. Um, so, you, so your parents get here. Mm-hmm. Um, you make it. So, how long were you in the hospital? What was I your was recovery like? I was in the hospital like? for six days. Six days. Yeah. Wow. I actually lost my right eye. Right. That was one of the, um, mm-hmm. you know, the bullet entry points. points. Was my right eye. Your right eye. Um, which, if that's all I have to lose, yeah, I'm fine with that. I still have another good eye. Yes, you do. <laughs> so I'm fine. I don't. That doesn't worry me at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so the recovery process, I always, because people ask me that oftentimes, mm-hmm. but there's like the physical recovery yes. and then there's the emotional the recovery emotional, the mental. and your spiritual and that yes. takes long, right. you know, that's the longest part. I think, mm-hmm. you know, physically, uh, you know, young, I was fit and all that stuff. So I kind of physically was able to get through that part. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, the emotional and spiritual, I still have PTSD from it, of course, you know, absolutely. um, that's probably always going to be, you know, with me. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it will. And, um, that is the part that's a work in progress. Mm-hmm. I have had like a lot of therapy yes. about it, awesome. a lot of prayer about awesome. it, and I've had to forgive him. Absolutely. Early on, I had to forgive right. him. Right, and I and, yeah. and I don't know who to attribute this quote to. I think mm-hmm. Nelson Mandela, mm-hmm. but um, something about forgiveness that I like is mm-hmm. we forgive, you mm-hmm. know, not for the other person, but we do it for ourselves. That's right. That's you right. forgive them so that that's you can right. move on with your life. That's right. So yeah. it's like you just have to forgive. That's and we right. Move on. I agree. We forgive not mm-hmm. for them, but for us. Because yeah. there's no reason why you should be held captive no, to that's, that. That's absolutely true. So that's awesome. So mm-hmm. I've, I've just been so inspired by your story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I Thank hope you. and pray that um, everybody else has. Yes. So um, if you just want to mm-hmm. um, just share any advice mm-hmm. or any words of wisdom, if there is somebody else out there that might be going through an abusive situation right. or a stalking situation, what would your advice to them be having gone yeah. through this? My advice is just trust your instincts. Mm-hmm. When you think something's not right, mm-hmm. you know, I did think a few things weren't right early on. I didn't know what it was, mm-hmm. but just go with that and it's okay just to leave early. You know, once you get that instinct, just trust that that's a higher power and God. That's that's the way of, 
you getting the information that you need to, mm-hmm. to get out of there. Absolutely. Um, and then also just never be desperate for a relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, looking back, I do think I was so interested in getting married that I, I overlooked things that I should have been paying more attention mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. And then um, if you have a friend or anyone that you think is going through something, be Absolutely. there for them. Because domestic violence doesn't only impact the person, yes. but the entire community. Absolutely. You know, my the kids in the neighborhood, everybody experienced that with me. They you know, that's with them for the rest of their life too. So it's it's something that um that we all have to kind of protect each other, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So absolutely. Yeah. That's great advice. Thank you yeah. so much. And before we close, yes. we know that um God has been good to you, obviously. Yes. You're alive and well, yes. praise be to God. Married. But you also are married <laughs> yeah. and you have a son. Yes, I do. You now are here. You live in the Bay Area. I'm back in the Bay back Area. Back in the Bay Area, That's right. close to your parents. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what's that like? That's great. It feels good to be back here. Yes. You know, it was good to go, um, you know, to the East Coast, and I love my life there. But it's good to get back home. You know, I miss being around my family Absolutely. and, you know, the weather here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I oh, didn't, yes. yeah, the East Coast was cool, but I did, like, get tired of the snow and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it just really feels good to be back here. Mm-hmm. You know, this awesome. is these are my roots. Awesome. So it feels good. Good. Well, it's yeah. good. It's good to have you back. Yeah, and I'm so you. glad we crossed paths. I'm so yes, glad yeah, to have too. you on the show mm-hmm. and to share your story. And obviously, if you want to hear more about mm-hmm. Soyini's story, um, going through hell to get to heaven, the harrowing account of how true life mm-hmm. can turn to true crime in an instant. Yes. That's amazing. So feel free to um, go to her website um, and get her her book. Um, mm-hmm. They can go to your they website. They can go to Amazon or my website. That's right, right. And learn more about you and mm-hmm. your story if they want to have you come out and speak. You Absolutely. do speaking engagements. Yes. Because um, we just, we don't want anybody else no to more. have to go through no what more. you went through Mm-mm. because you are so blessed yeah. that you got through that. Yes. Um, and I'm just so grateful to God for you and for sharing mm-hmm. your story. So thank you. You're welcome. For thank, you, thank you, Terry. So, thank you. Thank yes. everyone. And thank you, thank everybody, you for tuning in to another yes. episode of Real mm-hmm. Talk with Terry. Make this 24 account. Mm-hmm. Thank you. God bless you and have a great day.